Welcome to Leadership Talks with your host, Dr. Kate Vodder. In each episode, Kate speaks with successful leaders across industries, real people, and local leaders. Each of her conversations explore different leadership styles, how people achieve unbelievable success, overcoming challenges, and how to become the best in the world. You can find this show at www.ascentsolutions.net and on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and more. Now here's the host of Leadership Talk, Dr. Kate Vodder. Hi, welcome to Leadership Talks. Today on the show, I have a special guest and friend, Sue Rigler of 100 Mile Brewing Company. Sue, welcome. Hi, Kate. How are you? And thank you so much for having me today. Of course, I'm so excited uh, and love, you know, visit. Uh, we should have done it on site so that I could imbibe in your deli delicious beverages <laughs> next time. Next time. Um, so tell us, how long has 100 Mile been open now? 100 Mile Brewing has been open six months. So we are very new. We opened at the end of last year in December of 2020. Awesome. And can you tell our listeners a little about of like, I'm an avid brewery connoisseur, so I know lots, I think. Um, but can you tell our listeners who maybe haven't entered the brewery scene yet a bit about like what the business is? Yes, we have. Um, it's The word brewery is in our name. However, we're much more than a brewery. We have um, we brew our own beer on site. We have 24 taps where we brew our own beer and we also have a full restaurant component so we have amazing delicious chef inspired menu and i've been told many times that our burger is literally people dream about our burger so yeah. <laughs> and along with that then we have um, full cocktails so we have signature cocktails and ironically we were just written up um today um by the phoenix new times about our cocktails so not only up here we have we have something for everybody they are good cocktails, can confirm. <laughs> Maybe I've had, I've had most of the menu now. <laughs> uh, so you're six months into operating this wonderful establishment. What was your journey before the brewery? Yes, before the brewery, I went to, I actually sold, um, sold brewing equipment. I, I, I'm an ASU alum and I graduated with a degree in microbiology. So I had this epiphany or revelation to open up a microbrewery when I actually saw a microscope in a craft brewery that I was in in Montana. So it kind of um, got the ball rolling and I went and talked to the brewer on site and he said, well, brewing is all science. So my worlds right at that point collided. My love of science and my love of beer collided. And I said, hey, I want to get into the craft brewing industry. So with that, I went back to school um, and got my certification in brewing from UC San Diego. And that is how I was led to opening up this brewery. And so right before I did open the brewery, I got experience and I sold brewing equipment. So I was actually able to go to over 500 breweries on the West Coast. Ooh. Yes, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> I bet for a number of reasons. Right. Uh, tell us a little about brewery school. Like I know a lot of folks, you know, get into home brewing, but like you went to school. So is it five years? Is it two months? Is it online? Like how do you, what's brewery school like? It was actually in person. Um, I lived at the time in California. I lived up in Manhattan Beach and the school is in San Diego. So I had a, a, a commute and it took two and a half years for um, the finish, it was part science-based, it was part business-based, and then um, an internship. So it was um, not only theoretical, but it was also hands-on the internship. And it was, I, the reason why I went back to school is because I really, other than being a microbiologist in theory, I know about fermentation, but um, how to brew beer. Um, I, at the time, I'm, I'm a little bit embarrassed to say, but I hardly knew what a hop was. <laughs> so by the time I was finished with it, I was well on my way to understanding um, brewing. That's awesome. 
So you mentioned that, you know, in your time in sales, you went to 500 or so breweries. Uh, what'd you learn? <laughs> you know what? I learned a tremendous amount of the tap rooms, the brewing industry, the tap room experience is an intangible. And I got to see and smell and taste the good and also as well as the bad. So. I get a good visual and uh, picture of kind of what I wanted in a tap room and the ones that I'd like, just you walk in and there's a good feel. So I think that besides theory of science, I think that was the biggest gain that I got out of um, going to 500 breweries was just getting to see how other people do things and what I don't want to do and what I did want to create. Yeah, so you mentioned a tap room. Tap room is industry for like the customer space? Good question, yes. There's different parts of a brewery. The brewery floor houses all the tanks. Um, a lot of people call them vats, but they're actually tanks and fermenters. And the brewing equipment, what you actually brew the beer on is called the brew house. So in the brewery, there's equipment such as the brew house. And the tap room is where clientele, customers, and guests sit and enjoy um, either food or some some tap rooms don't have food, but our, we're more a restaurant. We have a tap room and a restaurant. So the tap room is where you sit and enjoy and relax. Awesome. So you mentioned, you know, the like going to all these places and the vibe and how a tap room has a feel. And in my experience of being a guest at various breweries. Absolutely. And I think that's part of like, I'm realizing in this moment of like, oh, maybe that's why I like breweries of, I like beer, beer is fine, but it's the vibe and the experience that I seek out. And so, you know, as I travel, I'm like the, one of the first things I'm searching for it when I'm in a new city is like local breweries, because that's where I want to go and what I want to experience. So, what did you learn from what you visited about how to create the space you've created? What I learned was, and again, it's it's kind of, I always call it an intangible. It's, mm -hmm. you really can't measure it. It's something that you just feel. So when you walk into a space, um, how is the music? How is the temperature, the furniture? Is your bar stool or what your, your seat that you're sitting on? Is it comfortable? Does it, um, are you gonna stay there and, and is it comfortable enough for you to stay there for a while? Um, furniture, climate, smells. Smells are very, very important. Um, in some of the some of the breweries I went to, didn't smell too good. <laughs> so you just you want people. Breweries are are like an extension of your living room. You want them to be very comfortable for people to hang out and feel welcome. So it's in it's it's the lighting, the color. It, there's a lot of factors that go into creating this wonderful guest experience besides just having quality food and beverage. Absolutely. So one of the things I'm noticing is some similarities between a tap room and a coffee shop uh, is so if like as, as a entrepreneur, if I wanted to come post up a hundred mile for a morning or an afternoon, is that cool? Am I welcome? I would love for you to. That's exactly <laughs> okay. And I, I ask for everybody, not for just me, <laughs> of, you know, especially and for remote employees too. Of, I'm either at, like I'm at home a lot, which some days is really nice, and other days is a little mind boggling and like, oh my god, I have to get out of the house. Uh -huh. And so having like having these third places, if you will, or I guess second place in my case, um, to be and feel at home and feel welcomed and like build community with other people that are around is, is huge. Um, so let the listeners know. Absolutely. Remote workers yeah. welcome. We would love for you to all come and hang out and bring your friends and work or, you know, um, we have Wi-Fi, we have pet friendly patio. Um, and if you get Bored with work, you can go play giant Jenga or connect four or cornhole out in the patio. Lots Absolutely. Love that. Uh, so what's it like, you know, like you're this business owner now, what has surprised you about the, the journey of being the owner? 
without a doubt is I always said for eight years that I wanted to own a brewery, own and operate a brewery. Um, now I am a restaurant tour. So by far, um, the restaurant component of it has, has is keeping me very, very busy and occupied. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what have you learned that a woman who came after you, you would want them to know? I would, you have to have a good team. Um, absolutely have to have a good team. You have to um, have thick skin when you're opening up a business. I have um, 60 employees now, which is incredible. Um, right. <laughs> and um, so organization, um, keeping your costs down, marketing. Um, there's a lot of a lot of moving parts to it. And to keep, I think organization and focus is really, really important. What systems are you using to stay organized? And when I say systems, that could be anything from Google Calendar to a handwritten notepad. Like what are the things you do to keep all the ducks in a row? I always say I'm kind of hybrid just because of my age. I still, I like my notebook. I can't mm -hmm. go all digital. So I have my notebook that I write, just take notes down. And then for the restaurant and the brewery component, we have, I have software set up where there's dashboards and everything is run digitally for food costing and for um, the brewery for inventory as well. Awesome. So you mentioned 60 employees. That's a solid amount of people. How are you navigating finding the finding and keeping the right people? Great question. Um, we actually have had um, very little turnover in um, our front of house. So our retention is, I, I feel very good about that. We have a lot of um, familiar faces when the locals come in here. Um, they see the same people, the same bartenders and, and wait staff. Um, so I feel really good about that. We have had some turnover in, um, in the brewing and in the kitchen, which uh, I'm a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. And um, every it, it's all working out to uh, we're doing really well and we have solid beer. And so um, as, as far as recruitment goes, I, I like word of mouth. <laughs> It doesn't always happen. So, we, I mean, we go on and look on Indeed. And then our website actually draws a lot of job applications in. I Which have just because oh, you can go on our website and we get it's I mean, it's incredible how many people actually go to our website and say that they want to work here. So that's kind of I always I always like that when I read people that they've been in here and want to work here because of, of of how they feel their customers absolutely feel. is there a button on the website of like want to work here click here it's called join our team and yes there is a button. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that that's been such an effective way for mm -hmm. people to be in touch with you so then as you're I, i'm fascinated by by people ops and with 60 people on staff like that I know that that flow is consistent of people change, people move, people get married, all the things. Uh, and so even when everything is as perfect as it can be, there's still gonna be change. Um, so what kinds of questions do you ask in your hiring process? You know, it's, it's not so much the questions. Um, they're not really related to hospitality or restaurant. I'm looking more at a personality and kind of a, a gut feel. I kind of mm -hmm. um, women's intuition, whatever, call it whatever you want, but um, just kind of a, a a a true, genuine feeling or gut feeling about a connection, an interaction. It, um, not so much, you know, have you worked in the restaurant business? You know, how long have you worked in the restaurant business? Because you can train that. Um, you can't train genuine connection and kind of you can tell people and they, some people get it so. yeah so when tell me more about this idea of connection yes i um a lot of times in my life i i've come to own this now but i get a lot of nudges and people go oh that's so serendipitous 
Um, I have a lot of that in my life. Like even getting this building was very serendipitous. Um, this building that we're in, which is located just, um, it's in Tempe off of the 202 and Scottsdale Road. So um, it, it's where the old um, Devil House was <laughs> back in the 80s. It was a 1980s college bar at ASU. And a Ew. lot of people have heard of it. So, <laughs> and then it was Club Rio for those that are a little younger. Um, but it was pretty iconic and it, it was, it's now closed. It was flattened and a skyscraper, a big um, high rise was put there called the Watermark. And I am actually part, in, I'm in the back lot. I'm not on the floor, the um, retail floor of the Watermark. I'm actually on a whole separate lot in the back. Um, so basically 40 years later, I'm on the same dirt that I went to the devil house and <laughs> opening up a brewery on the same dirt 40 years later, which is probably, that, that's very serendipitous that I actually ended up finding this location in such a prime location. Um, yeah. I also took back in um, the eighties from my dorm room, Manzanita, which is on university. I, it was facing North. And for some reason I grabbed my camera and took a picture facing North. Well, this building was built in 1974 and I was on the 13th floor of Manzanita and this, the brewery, actually the, the building is in that picture. So mm -hmm. I had that um, picture blown up and it's now framed on the wall in the brewery. Show kind of, again, how I think I just manifested this location and the brewery a long time ago. Right. How, do you mind sharing a bit about your manifestation process? I, you know what? I created a vision board five years ago um, and five or six, I don't know how long ago it was, but um, and two of my friends, I had never heard of a vision board like eight years ago. And two of my friends just said, you know what? You need a vision board. You need a vision board. I'm like, what's a vision board? So one explained it. And then three days later, the other one of my friends says, you need a vision board. So I'm like, oh, so-and-so just said I need a vision board. So I created a vision board. And I have that now to this day and I open it up and I look at it and everything, everything that I put on my vision board, ironically happened like happy kids. I have four kids. They're all happy. You know, I have, um, strength and running. I'm a runner and, um, brewery owner was on there. And that was the last one on my vision board that I didn't connect to. And all of a sudden it's, here's my vision board board has created. Um, I was at New Belgium Brewery. Fat Tire was my favorite beer a long, long time ago. I put yeah. New Belgium Brewery on my vision board. And when I was traveling and going to breweries, I was at New Belgium and I got a picture at New Belgium in the exact same spot that I had on my vision board without even really making the connection until I went back to the vision board and read it. So kind of, um, I, I'm a, we are going to have a vision board night here at the brewery too. So we're going to have clients, clients cut pictures, magazine pictures, or bring magazines in, and then we're going to have a vision board night. So fun. Count me in. I want to help facilitate. Absolutely. That's so cool. So you said you did your vision board five years ago? It was five or six, seven. I wish I would have dated it. Yeah. Um, right? So date a vision board. Yeah. <laughs> Same. I have all, I've done a couple vision boards and I really enjoy, like I've done it with people. So like at an event, um, and just that energy of like, Hey, let's, let's create and let's vision. And yeah, it's, it's crazy how effective of a tool it is. Um, it is. You, it, it. you look at it every day and you just, it becomes part of your subconscious and your manifestation. So mm -hmm. happy you know, pictures of, I have a picture of a guitar and I started playing guitar. So it's like, yeah, that's so cool. Thank you for sharing. But I don't play guitar. Well, I didn't say it that's fine. <laughs> okay. It's not, it's not about that. It's about the experience of playing. So what's, um, so you're six months in, are you, how are you feeling? Are you feeling successful? Are you feeling still like it's really fresh? I feel like I'm um, free falling from an airplane. Really. Okay. 
Have you done that before? I have twice. You know? Okay. Me too. And the parachute has not opened up yet, but I've been told it will open up. <laughs> What's the range at which people are like, the parachute will open a, a year or two years? You know what, everyone, it, it's all over the board. You know, I have, a, I have a pretty big operation here with, I basically have three businesses in one. I have the brewery, I have the restaurant, and then we just opened a 1600 square foot event space which you have seen and had an event at. So um, it, it's just, there's a lot of moving parts here. Thank God I have a good team. Um, obviously no one does this alone. Um, Todd, the co-founder and my partner is amazing. I could not be sitting here and as sane as I am without him. <laughs> but um, yes. Yeah, so what else are you doing to stay sane? I run. I'm a runner. It's always been like every day, once um, a month. I run and I swim. I mean, okay. we do have lap around the lake every Sunday at 830. So I run at least one time a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is great. I'm like, build it in. Right. Right. So, um, yeah, I have, a, I have a lot of energy. I have a lot of energy. So it's like I have to get my energy out. And I, I'm a triathlete. So I, that's how I that's how I relax really is by working out. How, so not everybody I feel like has as much energy as you, myself included. What what are you doing to put energy in your cup? You know what? That's a good question. Just born with what it? Putting energy in my cup. Define that a little um, bit. More. So it, it could like running for some people might fill their cup. Uh, running for me would probably empty my cup. <laughs> like but like biking so biking with friends for okay. me is a thing that brings me joy makes me feel good raises mm -hmm. my energy level so what i i like i said i i really get i mean i always get a lot of energy from working out and i do have a lot of energy and it doesn't deplete my energy it actually adds to it and if i don't yeah. work out then i get crabby and that's not a good thing so do you, as a fellow worker outer, because I love it too, uh, what's, what chunk of the day works best for you? Morning. 100%. Like first thing, like first thing five, early. seven. Right. Five. Well, if now in Arizona, you have to work around the heat when you run. So mm -hmm. it, the heat dictates what time, but I'm, I've always been like, you know, five o'clock in the morning. I taught spin for 20 years at five thirty in the morning. So, um, ah. mm -hmm. Aha, that all makes so much more sense now. <laughs> One of those sweet, special humans. <laughs> Love that for you. So how are you as, as we're, so you're navigating of like six months, which to me, outside of the industry feels maybe like an inflection point of like all three businesses are up now mm -hmm. and are running. How do you get to what's next? Well, I'm, I'm looking at summers is, you know, I keep hearing how bad it is um, to run a business in Arizona in the summer. And of course, this being our first summer, we don't know what to expect. So we had a tremendous first quarter. Um, we have great reviews, great product. Um, but there is, I, there's definitely um, a tailing off. And, you know, I'm working just right now at ways to get people in the door in the summer because who doesn't like a cold beer in the summer? Come on, you know, and yeah. selling a commodity. I mean, it's, it's food and, and beverage. So right. everyone, not everyone leaves Arizona, not everyone leaves Tempe in the summer. So I just have to get a hold of the people and let them know we're open. You know, we're new people come in here every single day. And I hear, I live a half a mile away. I live a mile away. I've been living in Tempe my whole life. I never knew you were here. So, um, you know, it's just really like word of mouth, getting people in here. I'm doing some um, social media and geofencing. It's coming up in the next week, which I'm very hopeful for. And I am doing some target mail mailers to um, the North Scott sailor. The, the, there's 5,000 homes right to the North of us that yeah. I want to be their local hangout. Love that. That's super smart. Mm -hmm. How, so are you working with uh, like a marketing agency to do the mailer or how, how are you navigating those choices? Um, they, the mailer is through 
a company that I actually just found online doing a little bit of research because I can't go walking to 5,000 houses or, you know, getting out. So it's a company that's been around for 25 years. And then um, the real success in my business is, and I got to give Jordan Hudgens of Dash Track a huge plug here. Um, he designs my website and not only does he not sleep, um, he's like answering emails at 3.30 in the morning and I'm always emailing at 3.30 in the morning. I'm like, what are you doing up? He goes, what are you doing up? But um, his, the website is he's helping me with the geofencing um, and the marketing. It has marketing lists. So it's kind of got a MailChimp component to it. But um, so Jordan's been tremendous in my marketing efforts. And then I work with um, Susie Tim at uh, Knife and Fork Media for PR. So, um, you know, I'm just trying to cover all bases. Right. Which makes sense. It's a new business and it's still getting the word out. So how, what's the best way to physically get to where the site is? Yes. So we are located, as I said, we're located off the 202 freeway and Scottsdale road on the South side of the 202. So, um, there's, uh, Macayo's there that a lot of people, or it used to be a Denny's kind of a, it's kind of a mark that people know. So if you go through that parking lot and head straight West, you'll, you'll run right into us. We're a one story building. Um, otherwise you can come off of Curry and go South on college. And that will literally just take you underneath the freeway. Um, and you just follow this road. It'll go, we'll go right in. Also it, we're on the, by we're within steps on the north side of Tempe Town Lake Marina. So um, we're right on a bike path and part of the watermark. So did that make sense? Very cool. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, the first couple times I went there, I personally used Google Maps and it took me right there. And while I love all the things about the brewery and the food and the booze, um, also the parking to me is a real win of, I feel like a lot of breweries have pretty challenging parking and of like this particular location is un unique to navigate to, but once you're there, there's so much parking that it's never a thing. There's right. always a spot. Cause it's like, it's got such that, that larger lot to the West. Um, so it, to me is, is a major right. win because it's not like, I know there's going to be space for me. <laughs> right. And it's free. And it's free. Yeah. And safe too. Like it feel, feels like a very safe place to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so what do you, so for folks who do live around here, you mentioned brand new event space. Um, what's, what's your hope for that space? We just, yes, it's brand new, less than Two weeks old, it's about two weeks old now. And as I speak, as I sit here, they are actually in, this is why I'm not in the event space. I was gonna use it because it's kind of quiet, but they're, they have a lot of power tools over there. They're um, finishing up the bar today. So they're putting the kegerator in and we, we're gonna be, have a full service bar over there. So for catering and cocktails, mixing cocktails and serving beer over in the event space. But it's 1600 square feet, um, It it, hold 75 people seated and about 100 up mingling and it has um, wireless mic it has three smart tvs so you can do business presentations um, i anticipate probably a lot of um showers baby showers bridal showers maybe some rehearsal dinners business events um asu is going to have their um their luncheons there before the game day like the day before game day they have luncheons so um, and yeah, we have a lot of interest actually on the space already from ASU and the city. And can I please give a plug to both ASU and the city of Tempe? You're the guest. You do what you see fit. We are talking about the event space. I'm just going to take a little, go off on a little tangent and how much I love being a business owner in the city of Tempe. Um, you know, again, my roots, I'm from Iowa and I wanted to get out of the snow. So in the eighties, I went to ASU lived in California and then came back to open my brewery. So I lived in California for over 30 years and I came back to Tempe because it feels like home. And I could not think of a better city and a better location to be in. We are so supported. I feel welcome and I feel like the city wants 
me and 100 Mile Brewing to be here. So um, I know, and again, just my experience in working with brewers and, and breweries, a lot of them have tremendous fights with the city that they're in. And I just have had nothing like that. I just want to commend the mayor, Corey Woods. He's an amazing human being. He loves our potato chips. So Mayor Woods, come back in here and get some potato chips. I haven't seen you for a while. And yes, so, and Dr. Crow actually um, from ASU actually took the time to write me a letter and saying, thank you for building this community place for the city of Tempe and congratulations on making your dream come true, which I thought was really awesome. So that is that's great. It definitely goes a long way in making you feel welcome as a business Absolutely. owner. Absolutely. So back to the event space. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, we just opened it. So, um, and it's, I, I just want to get the word out. So if you have birthday parties or any type of private event that you need some private space, that's it. If you have a happy hour group with business, come in. We have areas on in the tap room where you can mingle, bring a large group. We have a lot, a lot of businesses that actually come in here either on the patio when it's a little bit cooler or oops, um, in the back area of the tap room. We have plenty of space for everybody. I concur. It is a lovely venue with plenty of room for people. <laughs> That's This is also great. Uh, is there any advice or thoughts you would want to share with the women who come after us of like, I see you as a trailblazer you know you are taking steps to live your dream and live your vision and i have to assume that that living in your values and your vision probably feels really good and not everyone is in a space where they get to do that so what advice could you share about like making that leap from whatever default world was to this is who i want to be i'm gonna do it mm -hmm. great question um and I hear this, I, I heard it a lot. And now being where I am right now, it's, you have, you must be driven by passion, whatever you're doing. It is just like a full on, just forceful feeling that if that's what keeps you going and that's what kept me going and is keeping me going, um, is just the passion for what I'm doing and it, where I'm doing it in the city. As I said, I love being in the city of Tempe. I love being a brewery owner. Um, I'm liking being a restaurateur, <laughs> yeah. so, but I'm um, just the drive and the passion. And I, you know what, the best part of this is when I get to walk out on the floor and talk to my guests that I have the biggest smile on my face. So that's what I'm passionate about is creating the space for whoever wants to come in locals, tourists, but passion. When did you realize that was your passion? I, I've i always been pretty social and energetic, so that kind of just comes along with the brewery. But really, it was when I saw that microscope in, in the craft brewery that I just had this desire to combine science and, and beer mm -hmm. and community. Beer is community. I mean, I always say there's a story. There's a story in every beer, you know. Beer brings people together, and that's what I wanted to do, and I think I'm doing a fabulous job of it. Yes, and what a beautiful tagline, be it official or unofficial for your business. Beer brings people together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. It brought us together. It did, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we had, I think our, you know, I like my good friend and her old boss um, had sang, sang your praises and was like, great, I want to meet this woman. <laughs> and here we are. Here we are. Yeah. Is there anything else you would like to share with our listeners today? Um, we have an event calendar on our website and um, we have a lot of events that happen. We have um, Cornhole that actually raises funds. Um, it's a nonprofit through ASU that raises um, funds for ASU families in medical need, medical hardship. Mm -hmm. And um, that's on Tuesday night. Wednesday night, we have board game night. And we have like 40 people to come and play board games. It's crazy, right? We have tie-dye night once a month. So you, 
you get um, $25, you get a white shirt and you leave with this beautifully, it's led by um, a gentleman that um, helps us tie dye. And then we have a mixology summer series coming up where you learn, we're gonna um, guide you through mixing cocktails and embellishing them and signature cocktails, kind of classic cocktails. So, and we have every Sunday, we at 8.30 now we do a lap around the lake. So it's a very, very casual walk or run. There's a three, five and an eight mile loop around the lake. And then if you come on in after and have lunch, well now breakfast, because we open at nine, um, you get half off your first beer. And it is really, it's, it's fun. It's building community and we have a lot of regulars that do it and it's very, very casual. So um, yeah, just, we have a, quite, a, quite a few events coming up and just every week, something fun for everybody. I love that. Well, Sue, it has been an honor and a privilege to have you on the show and talking about your story and your business. Uh, it sounds like if folks want to get a hold of you, they can check out the website and, and contact you there. Uh, so, Sue, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank the production team. It has been a lot of fun today. Uh, and to our listeners, thank you as always. You matter, you are enough, and the world is so much brighter when you let your light shine. So until next time. Thank you, Kate. You've been tuning into Leadership Talks with your host, Dr. Kate Vodder. You can find this show and learn how to be one of the best in the world at www.ascentsolutions.net and on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and more. Thank you for your positive feedback, comments, questions, and for sharing the show with others. 